When they enter this building, these fans know they're in for a night of excitement. They choose their heroes before they can even spell their names. Programming calendar, program. Fun-loving and fanatical, they live and die with their team. Introducing the Philadelphia Flyers. have provided the excitement and fire for the more than nine million hockey fans who have come to the spectrum. In return, the fans thrive on the pride, determination, and just plain grit of a team that has won over 40 games for eight straight seasons. It is rare in any sport to find a team that consistently will not succumb to a lopsided score or a physical threat. It is this element, the absolute refusal to submit to fear or embarrassment, that binds this team. The Flyers have spawned some of the hardest hitters, sharpest shooters, and slickest glovemen in the game. And of course, they can score. With superior skating and an improved power play formula, they popped in well over 300 goals this past season. For eight straight years, they have sold out every seat of the spectrum for every game. And on the road, they're the NHL's number one attraction, selling out 97% of every arena. In the 1980-81 season, the fans were traded to a successful blend of veterans and youth whose stated goal was to attack the best the NHL had to offer. Young and old alike, they took their abilities and carried on the tradition of pride. This is the Philadelphia Flyers. film is brought to you in part by the Pepsi-Cola bottlers of the Delaware Valley. For more than a decade, he has burned tracks on the ice. Playing in every single game of the season, Bobby Clark is the driving force of the Flyers. With his feisty style of play, the man with a boyish face attacked the record book keeping the fans emotionally involved with his every move. Playing against Boston on March 19, Bobby Clark was struck on the head with a puck, but refused to leave the game. Stalking the monumental 1,000th point of his career, he was only one short. Then at 31 seconds into the third period, he scored. Clark's teammates rushed to congratulate him and give him the puck that was worth your goal. The fan's sustained deafening roar was a song of praise for one of hockey's true superstars. Just as there are only a handful of baseball players with 3,000 hits, so too there are only three other active hockey players in the NHL who have crossed the 1,000-point barrier. Bobby Clark is truly the pride of the Flyers. Quick and lethal, Bill Barber is the perfect complement to Clark's scrappiness. The premier left winger in hockey, Barber has earned the respect of not only his teammates, but of the entire NHL. His 43 goals, 85 points in the regular season led the team and marked the eighth time in nine seasons that he has scored 30 goals or more. 
No team in the NHL ever produced three players that reached the 300 goal plateau in the same season. The Flyers scored their record-setting hat trick this season with these historic shots as Rick McLeish, Bobby Clark, and Bill Barber each scored their 300th career goal. With Reggie Leach already a member of the 300 club, the Flyers became the only team in hockey history to have four 300 goal scorers playing at the same time. Another milestone was achieved at the Spectrum on November 2nd. That night, in the usually emotional battle with the Bruins, the Flyers attained their 500th regular season win. That coming before any other expansion team had even reached 400. The team's consistent performance is something that head coach Pat Quinn attributes to the standards of excellence set by Ed Snyder and the entire Flyer organization. Our record has been so consistent because our owner is top-notch. Our general manager, Keith Allen, is top-notch. But there are people that expect a lot. And when you know you have to meet some high expectations, you work a little bit harder, too. And it's, that's what leads to the consistency that uh, this organization has displayed. Be a little more sensible with that puck so we don't get trapped like that too often, boys. You don't win hockey games that way. Top of the circle, throw it at the net, boys. You're not going to deke anybody there. Bounce them anyway. Nine boys. years as an NHL defenseman has given Pat Quinn the wisdom to guide his players. The type of game we have doesn't lend itself to moment-to-moment -moment strategy changes. I don't have the luxury to stop the play and say, okay, we're going to run this play or that play. In hockey, the coach's primary responsibility comes in pre-preparation. Uh, prior to the game, your year-long plans, really. And on the day of the game, it's to try to keep the players at the level uh, that uh, they can perform best at. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. That's what we were just talking about, going out like this instead of going out with determination at it. That's why I talk about that defenseman there. He went in the play and he made the pass. You turn and look at the pass. He jumped by a Murray and beat us into the play to make it a three on two. He's your man all the way. Keep your body in front of him. You can still look for that pass after he makes it. But make sure he doesn't jump by on it to, to outnumber us. Okay. I don't want to get into a situation where I'm not thinking well, where I'm confusing my bench, where I'm goofing up the line changes, where I'm giving the wrong information because I hadn't read the plays right. And the only way I feel that I can do that is to try to keep a calm uh, exterior. And uh, I might be excited as hell underneath, but uh, the important uh, part of it is not to transfer that uh, overexcitedness to the players. I want to display emotion. I try to do that on occasion. Wally! Wally, what the going on, Wally? Meadow, out, Bill, 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 Billy! Go, Tom, go hard! Head out, head out! Right out, right out, Buzz! From the citizens of the upper deck to the fans along the boards, everyone follows one particular player. When that hero steps on the ice, many hearts go out there with him. All right, Reggie! Come on now, Reggie! Come on, Barber! Come on, Kenny! Lynchman gets it back to Holmgren to the point to Wesley. Right side pass. Daly a shot. Good dipping save in there by Sevigny. Pull out first. Get it back! It's played back to Daly. He's in! Shot! one end of the rink to the other, the Flyers try to please their fans. Hockey has never been confused with ballet. The mental and physical toughness is a Keith Allen recruiting trademark. It is a common thread that keeps the Flyers a family of winners. Part of that family is the youngest net-minding trio in the NHL. <laughs> Peters and Ricky St. Croix were nothing less than brilliant as they combined for the second lowest goals against average in the league. Peters participated in the NHL All-Star Game for his second straight year. Next year, Swedish Olympic star Pelle Lindbergh, the American Hockey League MVP and Rookie of the Year, will be up in the majors. And with more depth than most other teams would ever dream of, next year's goaltending will be awesome. The 
1980-81 season was not without its unusual moments. as an unexpected wave of injury struck. With key players sidelined, help was needed. The new kids with the puzzled faces arrived. The players' promise of bringing new talent up into the ranks changed quickly from an idea of the future to an immediate necessity. Broken legs, bad back, eye injuries, and other frightening mishaps caused the veterans including all-star defenseman Bob Daly and Jimmy Watson to miss a staggering 150 games. But the new kids had been ready and in training at the Players Minor League Farm Club, the Maine Mariners. Nine years ago, one of the new kids was named Bill Barber. He stayed. Following her husband's career since he played junior hockey in Kitchener, Ontario, Jenny Barber is well aware of the joys and pressures on Billy's life as a professional athlete. Well, if the team is winning, everybody's happy. <laughs> and, you know, especially, too, if, if he feels that he's contributing. I think it's a compliment also if the younger players feel that he has leadership capabilities. Jenny and her two children, Carrie and Brooks, comprise the cheering section at home when Bill is playing out of town. Like the best. Daddy. <laughs> yeah. Like an increasing number of other players, the Barbers have permanently settled in the city where they play. After the kids are put to sleep, Jenny sits down and turns on Channel 29 to watch her husband at work. But 40 away games are only a tune-up to the special demands of the NHL playoffs. During playoffs, um, quite often, I'll speak to Billy and no response. <laughs> and that's, you know, only because his mind is, is on the game. Um, the pressure also is, is greater uh, on the children and myself because we have to give Billy that much more consideration at that time of the year than you do during the regular season. The Quebec Nordique goaler asked for divine guidance to control the Rat Patrol, a line led by pesky Kenny Lipsman in the opening series of the playoffs. But his prayers were unanswered. The Flyers gave the Nordiques some quick lessons about playoff intensity. The Rat Patrol chewed up the Quebec defense for 21 total points. Before the series began, the hockey world predicted that the slick skating Quebec club featuring the Stashny brothers of Czechoslovakia would topple the Flyers. Although the series went to five games, in the end, it was all Philadelphia. The Flyers savored their victory, unaware that the next match with the Calgary Flames would take them and their fans on a seven-game emotional roller coaster. The first part of the Calgary series was a downhill coast. The Flyers came out boldly in game one. Modifications of last year's power play changed a once ineffective attack into a deadly weapon. Overall, the Flyers' power play improved to become the second best in the entire league. St. Croix kept Calgary on a strict starvation diet, stopping 35 shots to record his first shutout in Stanley Cup competition. But the easy win proved to be bitterly deceptive as the Flames roared back to take a commanding three games to one lead. The Flyers responded valiantly to tie the series and bring the contest back home for the seventh and deciding game. 
As expected, the clash was not a gentle affair. Philadelphia had snapped a season-long jinx in the corral with the emotional sixth game win at Calgary. Coming home, many believed that a flyer victory was certain. But as the minutes ticked off, it was apparent that the Flyers had little left for this crucial final game of the quarterfinal series. It was a painful end to the season, but most analysts would agree with Pat Quinn that the loss was a matter of reaching an emotional peak one game too soon. I was proud of the way our boys fought back from a 3-1 deficit, but we didn't put enough emphasis on coming home and playing in, our, in front of our own crowd and giving the same type of work. I think we believed we had won it uh, before we played the game, and you can never, uh, you can never in sport uh, count a game one before it's done. For the Flyers organization, the future is now. New young players are beginning to spark the fans' attention. Players like Swedish Olympic defenseman Thomas Erickson and May Mariner alumnus Glenn Cochran. This new breed of hockey player from all over the world is the Flyers' future. Tim Kerr got a chance to show his stuff when Kenny Lensman was injured early in the season. He went on to lead all the team's rookies in goals with 24. More impressively, he collected a hat trick against Boston and led the entire team in scoring percentage. Added offensive power is on the way when Mark Taylor comes up from Maine and an NHL-tested Ron Flockhart returns to the ranks. Also in the future picture is Tom Gorin, this year's most improved player and one of an increasing number of college-trained American players in the NHL. Off the ice, Ben Wilson plays classical guitar. On the ice, Ben plays classical tough guy. If intimidation and domination are the essence of defense, then Ben is an artist. This year, he shattered all of the old records for goals and assists by a flyer defenseman. The future of the Flyers is built on leadership. When I see a Lensman grabbing the puck deep in our zone and spurting out of our end, I know he's ready to play and he can infect the other players on our team. When I see a Holmgren take a hit the first shift, and I know he's ready to play. With wings on his skates, Kenny Lensman has become the Flyers' top playmaker. When he sprints down the ice, the fans are on the edge of their seats with anticipation. Kenny's tremendous appeal is no doubt due to his Bobby Clark-like scrappiness. On Kenny's left side is Brian Propp. Consistently top, Brian has missed only one game in his two years in the NHL. Only 22, he has scored more points than any other flyer in their first two years on the team. Considered by many to be the flyer's most valuable player, American Paul Holmgren is the muscle of the Linsman line. Setting up court as close to the net as anyone can possibly get, he waits. Lensman in prop feeding, Paul soon triggers the goal light. The rookies and the veterans, the young and the old, are the blend to the Flyers' future success. that lives in the Flyers' name. This mistake was not born by coincidence. It was earned. The orange and black 
Jack have grown to symbolize excellence, ability, and a tradition of pride. This film has been brought to you in part by the Pepsi-Cola bottlers of the Delaware Valley.